Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, this is Blitzy DIY, and this is a new PC that I just built. Uh, it is a Ryzen-based uh, computer, and I'm really excited about it, but some of you that have been following this channel may think to yourself, Liz, you already have a PC, what are you doing with a second one? Um, well, uh, I've been doing a lot of work with um, Asus Tinkerboard and Raspberry Pi, and it's gotten me really into Linux. So I wanted to have a dedicated machine just for Linux. Now, yes, you can do a dual boot on a pre-existing Windows PC, but I, I wanted to have something that was just running straight Linux um, on x86 platforms so that I could really get fully into Linux, fully embrace it, and maybe at some point switch over totally from Windows to Linux. Um, before I had my current Windows PC, I was on Mac, so I am very flexible as far as operating system goes. I'll do whatever works at the time. But if you've been following the channel for a while, you might recognize this case. This is um, the case that my computer used to be in since I had it around. I figured, why not use it? So I decided to go with a Ryzen platform for this Linux build. Um, um, so we're using a Ryzen, uh, Ryzen 5 1400 um, chip. That's the um, lowest uh, end Ryzen 5 chip, uh, four cores, eight threads. Um, and that is on an ASRock. B350 chipset motherboard, micro ATX. It's actually the cheapest, uh, or like one of the cheapest B350 motherboards you can get. So I've seen a lot of people like buying that up because um, the goal of this build was budget, obviously. Like this could be a secondary PC. I already have a full PC. So that's why I went full budget. Um, we are going to eventually be rocking two sticks of um, four gigs. So a total of eight gigs of RAM, uh, Corsair Vengeance, but funny thing happened while I was building that I'll get to after I finish writing down the parts. Um, for graphics card, we got an EVGA 1050 Ti superclocked. Uh, went with 1050 Ti, uh, that was always the plan um, originally, just because you're still getting like decent performance, but you're not like totally breaking the bank. It's not like crazy. Because one of the things I am going to do on Linux is do some gaming to kind of show you that you can still have a gaming PC and run Linux. Um, and it just so happened the 1050 Ti out of just pure luck um, with this whole crypto mining thing it was one of the few cards that wasn't affected uh, because of the lower frequency clock. So we got lucky there. Um, for drive, we're rocking a single uh, 250 gig SSD at Western Digital Blue, basically because it was the cheapest SSD at the time that I purchased. And then for a power supply, we got Corsair CX450. I was originally gonna go with the 430, but again, at the time that I was purchasing these parts, the 450 was actually on sale um, to the point that it was cheaper than the CX430 power supply. So that's why I went with the 450. Um, I don't really need that much power for this rig, but hey, it works. Um, and is a bronze certified um, power supply. For the CPU cooler, I'm going with the stock AMD cooler. Quite a beefy cooler. I'd seen it in videos and stuff and thought like, wow, that's really big. And like I had planned to originally go with it anyway to also like keep the budget theme, but I forgot that I still had my stock Intel cooler and comparing the two, I couldn't believe like the quality difference. Like it's insane. And also this cooler is really quiet. I can barely hear it. So, so good for AMD for making the stock cooler perhaps come into vogue maybe. One thing I did do though was um, take off the pre pre-applied thermal paste and put on my own. It can take off with just some rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, 90% um, uh, and it takes it right off. Put a little bit of scrubbing with paper towels and then you just put on your thermal paste onto your CPU as normal and apply the heat sink. Now building in this case, I kind of wanted to redeem myself because one of the reasons why I moved my main computer to the Fantex P400 was I had a really hard time with cable management the first time around with this case. Keep in mind it was my first time ever building a PC and I was coming from using a MacBook. Cables were everywhere and the first time I, I built there it was just really bad so for this time I really wanted to kind of prove myself and I actually found some kind of hidden gems for cable management in this case. I was able to route the CPU power right along the side of the case so that it was basically hidden. I was able to really utilize the random um, cable holes that are throughout the case, including some really, really hidden um, ones for the front IO connectors, um, one of which is like 
hidden by the drive cage that I hadn't even noticed before, and I even used some ESD tweezers to pull the cables through so that I could route them, and then I cable tied them down at the tie down points, which to be honest, I hadn't noticed before my first time building. Um, just chalk it up to no experience, basically. So I also, one thing I did do was I actually took off the front panel, which I wasn't even 100% sure when I first built that that was possible, and rotated this front fan. It's a massive fan, as you can see, so that the fan connector would be on this corner rather than this corner. That allowed me to route the cape, that cable for the fan in with all the front I.O. connectors and um, kind of neatly um, plug it into the motherboard rather than um, just kind of having it go across, which I had to do previously. Uh, one cable that I did not hook up specifically because of cable management was the HD audio. The connector on this motherboard is just in the middle, so you have really no choice but to route it straight across the motherboard, which is just a pain. So I'm actually, I have this hooked up um, to my TV for a monitor, so, and then I'm actually just using the audio from HDMI to get to the TV, so that's how I'm doing audio for now. When I did my test boot, um, and unfortunately I don't have any footage of this because I was actually at a point where I was going to be taking a break, so I had turned off my camera and put away my lights and everything. Um, I went to boot and I just, I didn't get a post. I thought it was really weird, so um, I wasn't sure what it could be, so first I switched monitors. Um, and that didn't work. Then I switched cables, and that didn't work. And then, um, again, for those that have been around for a bit, you may remember I have a really cheap and terrible graphics card, a GT610. I swapped that in for the GTX 1050 Ti because, as you may know, Ryzen doesn't have onboard graphics, so you have to have a card. Um, I swapped in graphics card. Again, still no post. Um, I swapped power supplies. Still no post. I was really kind of going on my mind, so then I went to RAM um, and because I had two sticks and this is um, just a dual um, dual dim slot motherboard. So I took one out and I tried booting. Still nothing, but at that point I did notice that the fans would kind of spin up on everything and then they go down and then they'd spin up and then they go down. So it was looping. I said, okay, well that's progress. Uh, so then I switched that stick to the B slot. Still nothing. Took out that stick. Put in the stick I hadn't used yet into slot A, boom, we had a post. I switched slots with that same thing, that same stick, got a post. Put both slots back in, no post. So that kind of confirmed for me that it was a bad stick of RAM, uh, which I currently have in the mail for an RMA. So hopefully that will come in quickly and then we will have the full 8 gigs of RAM that I want to have in this system uh, because I want to game and do that kind of stuff and experiment with open source kind of production software once we get into Linux. Um, I, I really want 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, so that will hopefully come shortly. But after that, getting into the case, nice and simple, and I'm going to have two um, videos immediately up for this. Um, first I'm going to do Windows benchmarks. Uh, now I did not get a full Windows install for this machine, I'm actually just doing um, a um, insider's uh, copy of Windows, which you can create a uh, bootable media for Windows and then be able to run it on a disk. So I'm going to do Windows-based benchmarks first. Then I'm just going to clear my SSD and install Ubuntu nice and clean and do Ubuntu benchmarks um, and then go from there. Uh, I've chosen Ubuntu for a couple of reasons that I'll go into further when I get into those videos, um, but that's the distro I'm going to be using. I'm really excited to finally have um, access to an x86 uh, version of Linux eventually. Um, I, I've already found it come in handy uh, just having that Linux knowledge, even with stuff at work um, and also with DIY projects, of course. Um, so I'm really excited to be able to finally have access to a full uh, Linux computer like this. I think that will be really um, good for um, expanding my knowledge and also hopefully uh, helping you guys learn something new too if you've ever been curious or things like that. So, and also it's always fun to build a new computer, you know? <laughs> but that's been another episode of Blitz DIY. If you like to toss me a thumbs up, leave any questions or comments down below. Um, do you, are you into the whole AMD Ryzen kind of renaissance that's happening right now? Um, I think they're a really good uh, valued chip. Um, I had no issues once I was able to get boot, which again, it was because of a RAM issue, 
that I wasn't able to. Um, and I even flashed the BIOS with no issue and installed the AMD drivers from ASRock and everything was off and running, it was great. Um, I'm gonna be really curious to see how gaming goes um, since this is such a budget rig and I think it'll really appeal to a lot of people that wanna kinda get in on the ground floor with um, having a full computer system on a budget and able to do like a lot with it. But yeah, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more content like this. Like I said, Windows and Linux benchmarks will be coming shortly as soon as that stick of RAM comes in. Um, and until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.